Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this nice looking Android box. It is called Series X1. It is a 128 gigabyte internal storage, comes with 4 gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, and also it is an S905X3 chipset. It is by a company called Tangula. I want to mention that this box will take you to a level that you're really looking for and view the full review on our website. And when you learn that it comes with lifetime TV, I know that you're going to like it. So I want to mention before we go next, click to click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon, select all so that we will be notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click to click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos with a little more detail every time. All right, you can see that the box is really nicely designed. It even have little stickers on the side that we have to cut. And we have to open the top, take everything out. one by one and here are all the components that are part of the box it comes with this user manual and it is pretty cool the way that they have set up everything in this now it also comes with this user guide that is just a few pages the beautiful part is that it is pretty thick so it's really nicely written everything is in bullet forms so you're not going to have any kind of problem going through this it comes with this HDMI cable. It is about a meter long. It also comes with this power adapter, which is created for Canada and United States. It is five volt, two amp. It also comes with this IR remote. Now this is basically made so it can function with the app that they have for the live TV. Now here is the big moment, the actual box itself. It's sitting inside of a plastic. And when we take it out, this is how it looks. So the box is really nicely designed. I really like it. This is exactly the same as their older one, as you can see right now. Now, the only difference that I can tell right now by just looking at it is that I put a little USB on one of the USB ports. So this way I can tell that this is the 64 gig version. But again, it is running the S905X3 chipset on this one. And this one is the 128 gig. It is all with this little sticker. That's about it. There's no other difference that I can tell you about them. But let's just go through and show you exactly what they have entered on this. So in the front, you have this LED. Let me just take that off and you can go through it. You can see that there is the IR sensors right here. Now go into the one side of it. You can see there is a micro SD slot, which can read up to 128 gig. And then you have a USB 3.0. You have one USB 2.0. Now going to the back, you have the LAN connection, and then you have a AV connection, which is good for resetting. And then you have the HDMI connection. You have the optical audio connection, so you can connect it to older type of stereo system. And also you have the power, which is five volt, two amp. Going on the other side of it, there's nothing there, but once you go to the bottom part of it, you will see that it has a lot of holes for ventilation. And you do have a little sticker that talks about the ram the rom itself which is internal storage also what type of chip you have and what type of power and amp you need just in case if you ever misplace your power it's all written over there now going on the top i really like that little design that they have done is it's red and it also says the name really big and really gigantic i really like that and also it's very shiny now i have to mention that it is very fingerprint residue as soon as you put your finger it will put some fingerprints on it so anybody touches it you will know already that somebody touched it just like the front you can see that it does put some fingerprints all right enough said about it let's get disconnected so always connect your hdmi wire first and then connect your power all right so while it's booting up this is what you should see first And then it goes into the screen with this nice animation. All right, so this is the main screen 
for the box as soon as it boots up. You can see you have the icons already populated that we're connected via Wi-Fi. There's a Bluetooth. Also, you have a little paintbrush. That means is you can clean all the process or all the apps that are running in the background. The time and the date is there. If you go down, you have huge icons for YouTube, Netflix, this is the file browser and then apps you can click on it and it takes you to all the apps that are installed on this. There are some that we installed and we got rid of some of those bloated software that doesn't work. And then the Google Play Store, it comes with Firefox browser. And also you can change this background to a different one by just clicking here. Now there are some preloaded ones that they have already installed and already put there, but you can change it to your desire, whatever you need, you can go back and enter it here and then you will be able to process it. So the one that is already coming is this one. Let's change it to, uh, let's say this one, that's it. And then press back. Once you go all the way in the back, it saves it and then that will be your main background picture. You can see right now, it's a little clashing in the bottom. So I'll change it back to the normal one. Let's go back. The next thing is settings. You can click on it. And here is where you will be able to check your Wi-Fi. Also, when you log in, you will have a different username and password. In this one, it will show your account. Mine is blurred out. And then you can go to your apps if you need requires for it to get clear cache or uninstalled. You can go here. And then going down, you have more options. The one I really like is called MG Settings. When you click on it, you will be able to hide. There's going to be a little bar in the bottom. We will click on it. It's called status bar and you can have it or you can just click on this to go down. This way it's just hidden right now. And there you go. Now it's hidden totally, but you can turn it on. So that way it shows up all the time in the bottom. I don't like that actually. So I'll get rid of it. And also you have system update. You can click on it. And if there is any system update, you can click here. It will check and it will tell you if there's any updates. Right now we are sitting on this update. So we do not need to do more updates. All these icons you can see in the bottom are all just shortcuts by just clicking this plus button. You will be able to add or remove icons very easily. Like right now I have Disney Plus. I will uncheck it when I go back. It just disappeared. Now if I have to click on it again and I have to add it and I press back, it comes back. Did you see that? How easy it is to process it. So this is how this part is set up. And let's go next to some benchmarking. The first thing we will go through is going to be Antutu benchmark. We have already processed this. It will take a couple of seconds for it to load and come back. There you go. So we received 75,228 for this box, which is a really good number for this type of chipset and also RAM. The next thing we want to go to and check it out is going to be Geekbench. Now Geekbench, we already run it. So I will go to history. And there you go. So for single core, we got 132. For multi core, we received 453. Now we will press back to get out of it. Now, this is something very mandatory for a lot of you to learn is that if this box is rooted or not, this one does not have full access. It says that, sorry, this the root access is not installed on this device. One more thing I want to mention that when you're going through this is there's a lot of apps that you can install from Google Play Store. And there are some apps that you can install from EPK Pure, or you can go through AppToy to get them. Now, remember, Google Play Store is the one that I recommend everybody to go and get some apps. And the next thing I wanted to capture is going to be AIDA64. Now, this is very, very big because it gives you everything raw file so you can see it. First thing, manufacturer is AM Logic, model number is X1 series, and its brand name is AM Logic. And going down, the RAM installed on this is 4 gig, how much you can use, and how much is available. Now, the best part is you can see there's a lot available. For the internal storage, this one has 128 gig space, and you can see how much is available right now and how much has been used by the OS, by the recovery, and also by the apps that we installed. Bluetooth on this is 4 plus, so that's a plus sign. Going under CPU itself, you can see the 
ARM Cortex A55 running on 1908 MHz. It is structured on 64 bit, but the software that is running on this is 32 bit. It is a quad core processor, and you can see the ones that are running, the ones that are sleeping, and you can see that it does not go really high as 1908, that it is not going to heat up that fast. And the CPU utilization is roughly about 30. It doesn't go over. Now, if you look under the scale governor, is interactive, which we really require. Now, going under display itself, it is set up under 1080p and it is 60 dpi, which is really good. The GPU rendering on this is Molly G31. And then OpenGL is 3.2, that means is the gaming on this will be awesome. We will try to play a few games to show you. Under Android, it is Android 9 Pi. They API level is 28, which is really good. Now the security patch is all the way from 2018, so they need to work on that a little bit to make it better, except that everything else looks beautiful. You can see it all the way in the bottom. And then when you go to under terminal is where you're going to be able to see the actual part of how much heat up it will get. So it is roughly about 56 and it doesn't go higher than that for the actual CPU. And then for the actual RAM is right there too. And then the battery itself, which is the power adapter that is connected on the actual PCBA board or they call them motherboard in this case, it is really low, which is really good. So that is the plus sign. Another thing that I really like is when you go through this, you can see all of your codecs that you really need, something like VP8 and then MPEG4, H263. You can see that these are all done by Google and then the AM logic is right there. So you can go here and you can see the VP9 is there, all different type of it. And if you go up a little more, you will be able to see the H263, the AVS2, everything is there. Now we will get to a few things in a little bit to show you some more information about this, but all of your codecs are right here. So that's good enough for AIDA64 to give us some information that we really need about the box itself. So we will press home. And the next thing we want to go to, but we cannot, is going to be Netflix. Now I have to mention that the Netflix on this do require to get updated, but while you're doing that, make sure that you have your own subscription in order to log into it and use it. Now, don't get me wrong, there's on the VODs, you're going to see a lot of videos, but this is a total different level. And also for this, you need to use an air mouse remote in order to play with it. The maximum resolution for the Netflix that you can get out of this is going to be 480p and not higher than that. So it is going to be standard definition, but once you start watching your shows or movies inside of it, you're not going to see that much of pixelization. It's going to be nice and smooth. Another thing that I have to mention also is going to be Disney+. Plus. Now, Disney+, Plus, you do require to get a subscription from the Disney+, Plus website itself, and as long as it's compatible to your country, this you can use. And yes, you do not have to click on download before you can view things. They have the codecs in this that will make it work perfectly when you're using this box. I have to make sure that I have to let you know that there is a full review for this box on our website, so don't hesitate to watch. Did you see that it just moved? Yeah, that's a little glitch from the software. Now, going next, there are a lot of different things in this that you can play with. Now, another thing that I want to mention is going to be YouTube app. Now, YouTube is something that we always like to play with. Now, YouTube app, you will be able to see that if the file that you're running is 4K or not. You can see that it is playing it on 4K for us, but that's not the only thing. You will be able to see, so I'm going to zoom into this part right here. You can see that right now that I am capturing it as a 1080p. It is eight frames dropped out of this money, and it is running it on 4K and 60 hertz. You can see that it is using VP9 Kodak, so that's why it's playing it very good. There are some videos that will break it. And yes, it will not really work. And that's why these guys noticed it. And that's why they brought in another app into this. Let's go to it. It is called Smart TV YouTube. So I know this is created for the actual smart TV, but this app will be able to play those videos that are breaking for you. That means is that Kodak is not compatible with the S905 X3 chipset, and that's why you require to play it through this. So that is a really cool thing to 
know and learn now that's not the only thing one more thing i want to mention and i want to do is going to be playing with some videos using something like vlc player now just to show you that this can play a uh, 4k 60 hertz or 10 bit videos i'm gonna go into my network all right so here is our first video now i know that this is done by samsung but this is 4k and 10 bit on 60 hertz so you can see that it plays it like water and there's no stoppage to it and the sound is right everything is accurate on it so there's no stop to this and that's why we really really like this that it is playing it very very fluent so that's not only we have our own little video that we always playing now this is on 1080p 60 hertz it's playing it very nicely this is very old file that we have but we really like to play with this this is niagara falls i really miss this place i know that we're on lockdown hopefully it will open up so we can go back and get some more videos from there but you can see that everything is done properly there is no stop you can see everything is properly captured all of the stuff you can see the bird is going properly this is 4k video and it does play it accurately for you so that means is the network that we have right now through this is 10 100 this is 4k file and we are connected via wi-fi right now to play this so it works perfectly for us all right so enough about this and let's get out of this so the next thing we want to capture will be the speed test so you have to open it and once you go there here are the best parts so first thing we did was we connected via lan connection so for the first time when we test it we received 728 for our download and 32.4 for our upload i want to mention that we are in a gigabit lan connection our upload rate is maximized on 32 you can see that it's exceeding and also the arc is not that much it's just going straight and also for our, our download rate also it's just going from the small to the biggest and the, you can see the ping was very low too the next time when we processed we got a little bit better marks you can see we went to 775 and for our upload rate was 32.2 which is exceeding again so these are the best parts about it another thing that we have done is we have a mesh network so when we try to connect and we want to check to see exactly what type of connection we are getting with the mesh network on wi-fi so they put us on ac wi-fi and you can see we received 202 for our download and 30.8 for our upload remember that there's a huge difference between going from 2.4 and to actual 5g network the best part is that mesh network is just going to connect you as they prefer themselves not you so that's why you received a better number now this is a mesh network so when we went for second time it went a little bit better we got 210 for our download and 31.8 for our upload now this is not depending to the actual box again it depends to your router and if you are going to be connected to the routers that your isp provides for you those ones always giving you a little bit lower number you can make this about roughly about 300 to 350 by having your own routers if you want to learn that ask at the bottom of the video we would love to make those videos for you but this is how this really works and you can see there's not much arcs into it that is going up and down it was really straightforward going through to get 210 from our mesh network so this works really good with the actual box all right you can see right now that we're playing a game with this and it plays it very nicely very smooth very very smooth that means is when we connected our gaming controller via bluetooth to this it worked very nicely very smoothly as just added and now we are able to play this game with this now going through it there's a lot of other games that you can get and you can play on this box i have to mention with the space with also with the app that has over 4,000 channels it will play it very nicely for you i know you will love this even more when you go through it i have to mention 
that all the links will be available where we can order it from and also if you want to learn more or you want to ask some more questions don't worry drop it on the bottom of the video we love to help you out asap except that i hope you guys like our video if you do like it click the click the like button subscribe button on the top comment on the bottom always remember to visit our own website which is xitex.info like us on facebook follow us on twitter instagram and other social networking places and thank you